what's up guys welcome back to my channel i'm zintit Kali, and today i have for you another immigration video um today's video is gonna be about the things you need to do as soon as you land in canada or at least your first week in canada and um yeah without further ado guys let's jump right into the video Still. So if you've not watched my video on 10 things you should bring with you or pack with you as you're coming to Canada, please go watch that because this video is going to be following, you know, now you've landed and this is your first day, first week, first month you're enjoying Canada and these are the things you need to get. So yes, if you've not watched that video, go watch it and then watch this one. So yeah. 10 things to do upon arriving to Canada. Number one is a very, a very important, and that is getting your SIN number. Your SIN number stands for your social insurance number, and that's a very unique identification number, um, whereby it's literally only for you. Like, the, that, that number is literally only for you. If someone, um, finds out about that number or you share that number with another person they could literally um fraud you and take your identity so you need to make sure you keep that number safe um but how do you get that number you apply at service canada so as soon as you come it could be the first day it could be the next day you go to service canada all you can do is just put in on google um nearest service canada or service canada near me and that will just show up a list of um service canada near you i would suggest that you call before going just because of with the old covid and the pandemic they might have different hours and um they might also have um some things they don't do um one-on-one -on -one visit they could say oh do it online or whatever but you're going to have to call them just to know if anything actually changed in their policy from what i know it's a nine digit number i believe it's free your passport and all of the required documents that they need be it work permit study permit visitor visa um your same number is going to have an expiry date and the expiry date is going to match um your visa expiry date too so for example if your study permit um ends or visa expires in december 31st 2021 when you get your same number they're going to give you your same number um up until that date when you reapply for renewal for your study permit you should also renew your sin number without your sin number you cannot apply for jobs in canada so you definitely need your sin number to apply for jobs the second one is get your documents together so since you're new in canada you should have a folder whereby um you kind of have your important um document from mine um i know that i didn't get my physical copy of my study permit until i actually landed in canada yeah that's pretty weird like i didn't have that i only had the visa to come to canada and i kind of had like um a copy page or whatever but it's not until i landed and they gave me my actual like brown paper study permit and i'm not sure how that works with um visitor visa or work visa and um with um permanent residency um landed permanent residence um i think all you need is your um confirmation of um, permanent residence and then when you show that you can be able to apply for your um, permanent residency card and just have your passport with you also because obviously you're going to need that I think your passport and your study permit or your um, any kind of visa would be that two identification that you're going to use just to start until you get to apply for your health card or um, your school ID or um, driver's license or um, any other um, ID card that you might need. Um, but yeah, just have that document intact and accessible for when you actually do need it. The third one is to try as much as possible to get your bank account set up. ASAP okay we have different kind of banks here in Canada we have TD that's um trust dominion 
<laughs> we have RBC, um, Royal Bank, Canada. We have um, CIBC. Um, we have Scotia Bank and um, all other banks um so yeah just try and just walk in or call them and try and get something set up i know that they usually have a deal for new customers or even a new students there could be a deal of oh if you sign up with the checking account you get one year no monthly fee and that's a good deal you can also get um free money they can be like or if you sign up right now you get fifty dollars upon your first drawer or whatever um, and then you also get a maybe free iPad or um, just something just ask them or oh, what do you do you have for new customers and just try and bag in something so you get something in return or whatever <laughs> um, I know for me I think I got like um, a credit card with that and that also add no monthly fee and I think they give us like under dollars just to put in the account so that was free money like you know if they have any deal you should definitely take advantage of that the fourth option is a phone slash data so let's start with phone phone you could either, you could either have your phone from um nigeria or whatever country you relocate from or you could buy a new phone i know that i um used my samsung um for like the first few months until i actually got a new phone and um on the other on the other side you can also get a new phone here so you can either one buy it you know cash get the phone and that's it or you can buy it um as um what do they call it what's the word for it i totally just blanked out um it's pretty much like this deal that they do like a phone payment plan kind of thing so for example freedom mobile is a service provider here and they pretty much say oh if your um phone plan is 45 dollars every month you could get an iphone 12 and you will only have to pay 50 dollars every month so that's just an extra five dollars on top of your normal monthly phone bill don't quote me i'm not saying something that is happening right now or deal happening right now i'm just calling random numbers um but yeah you can always try and call them there's so many service provider i use freedom mobile um and i don't think i will recommend them because like they don't work the all of ontario like i've actually traveled to um just a few hours down west and there's no service and it's like what if someone gets stuck or whatever um but yeah <laughs> the other service providers are bell um rogers is rogers a phone service provider or just wi-fi i don't even know I'm gonna try and google it and then put some of the service provider you could possibly join right here so for data you could either do monthly fee so you have like a fixed amount that you pay every month plus tax or you can do like um pay as you go so obviously you have your sim card and it's kind of like the thing we use in nigeria so it's not until you actually put money in your um phone or in your sim card that you can then call someone um but you can also do the other option which i do so i pay like a fixed amount so let's say i pay 50 dollars every month and then i can be able to call unlimited call unlimited text unlimited data um and stuff like that um again you're going to have to you know do a little research with the service provider and see what deal they have and also the one that is affordable for you the fifth one is housing housing is very tricky i'm not gonna lie the um the good thing is that for students housing can be very very easy for them to get because um they have proof that they're starting school the next september or the next school date and um they pretty much have that there's also student housing whereby they literally need to see that you're going to school and that's it so that's easy for them let's say you're not here on like a student visa you're here for like work permit or um 
um, landed immigrant, I'm sorry, landed PR, um, it might be tricky. So first of all, what landlord usually require is um, reference from your previous landlord. And if you've not lived here before, obviously you don't have any landlord that you can use as your reference. But one tip is that if you had a landlord back home, try and see be you know in good relationship with them, and they could potentially help you out and draft out a letter just to use as a reference for you when you get here. I'm not sure how many landlords do that for like you know international landlords, but it's something you can definitely give um a try. Second one, um, landlord usually require um credit history, so that's pretty much all the um pretty much all your all your debt all your basic all and how much you spend and stuff like that um sometimes landlord is really require um credit score so if you don't know in canada there's something called credit score um you live by credit here so pretty much they want you to um get credit and see how best you can pay back and then you have your credit history and your credit score so i think um the higher your credit score the more responsible it kind of shows that oh if you um if we borrow you money you're going to pay back or the landlord will see oh your credit score is good which means you're responsible which means you would try and pay your um, monthly rent in time and they will have you know reassurance that they shouldn't have any problem with you something you can also do when you land is you can also um, maybe rent airbnb and then you know stay there for one two weeks or even a month and that airbnb landlord which is temporary could be your reference for not your new place that you're going to be getting and for the housing you can also buy a house if you have the money cash down buy a house <laughs> buy a house obviously like if you have the money i would definitely encourage you to do that so if you don't have any housing option if you maxed out um all other options you could consider calling up a friend that you say oh you this girl is in canada i knew her from high school or whatever let me call her to see if i can stay with her you could either stay with family or friends you can stay with um someone that you know from back home your previous neighbor or something try and get in touch and see if they can let you stay with them um for a few weeks or even days until you can be able to get back on your feet and then um settle down peacefully in canada sorry guys my battery died and i had to charge it so i can just end this video and go to work i have night shift so <laughs> i'm not even looking forward to that um yeah so the sixth option is to get your insurance be it dental insurance be it health insurance be it car insurance even if it's life insurance if or pet insurance whatever insurance you want to get you can do that um what i know as a previous international student um our school fees had the insurance combined with it so we had the advantage of um getting an insurance um so that was pretty helpful um you do have to go to school to go sign up for that so yeah sign up for that even though you don't need it please use it you paid for it literally like and also like for dental insurance you get to clean your teeth like twice a year make use of that if you don't use it it's still just gonna be the money that you paid to the school and never used so since you already paid for it and it's part of your insurance i would say that you should make use of that as um a permanent resident i know that you're eligible for um OEP, which is the Ontario Health um, Card, um, and um, I'm not sure if you have to wait like a month or how that works, but um, you can always try and research more about that just to know. And um, with Health Card, it's free; you don't have to pay for that. As a visitor visa, I think you're gonna have to buy your own insurance and pay every month. You're gonna have to, you know, check in with the insurance companies just to see how much their rate is, and then. And they'll give you the numbers for um, how much to pay every month the seventh option is transportation as soon as you land in canada you want to figure out how you're going to get from point a to point b make sure you know that's part of the decision um you have several options so for example if you want to take the bus 
you need to make sure you're familiar with where the bus stop is have the apps on your phone to help you for transportation because you can easily get lost and i'm speaking from experience okay <laughs> there was a time that i literally missed my bus and it took like another hour or so to come back here and there were times that i've missed my bus where like i, I was in a completely different city <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah make sure you know your um transportation and have the apps on your phone to help you navigate from um point a to point b um you can also try and buy a car if you have money you can buy it on credit so you know have like a down payment and pay the monthly funds on that or you can buy cash for the car you're gonna have to um add the cost of gas every month that is a huge factor that you need to consider you also need to consider um not even consider you have to pay insurance okay you know in nigeria i didn't even know there was a thing called insurance someone slam your car and you run away and that's it you know <laughs> or you guys fight 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 or argue 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 and then nothing happens after that but here you pay insurance if anything happens they will always try and um you know put in a claim and wherever wins wins obviously from the incident you will know so for example let's say someone was speeding or highly intoxicated and um they were under the influence and then they smashed your car from behind they're obviously at fault so you should call 911 and then let police um get involved and then they will notify your insurance or you notify your insurance but yeah that's it about car and um insurance as an international student <laughs> i will always tell international students the big tips i have for them the school gives you bus pass okay the school gives you bus pass depending on the school you go to take that bus pass take that bus pass and use it okay you don't need no car as an international student just take bus once you finish school then you buy a car or let's say you're like halfway done with your studies like you know you're in your third year or your fourth year and then you can get a car number eight is having a source of income i know that's hard you know you've already spent money throughout this process study permit or permit a visa biometrics fingerprints everything you name it immigration is not easy and it's draining financially even so um yeah getting here you need to make sure you still have source of income because the bills start rolling honey they don't even wait for you they start rolling once you once you step your foot in canada you, you want to just be flying away you see like you're gonna have car insurance to pay gas you're gonna have rent you're gonna have to eat you're gonna buy groceries if you have kids you have to feed them you know you have to pay for hydro you have to pay for um wi-fi you have to pay for your phone you have to pay for phone bill like just everything okay um so yeah get your um source of income you know the government helps with funding so they help with um ontario works if you're in ontario and then they pretty much help you for a few months until you get on your feet and find a job with job you can always visit immigration centers such as um welcome immigration center i know they help newcomers settle down on the, on the in the country they help you with employment and stuff like that speaking of um services and everything number nine brings me to community services and how to just go out there and seek for help so like i explained there are um government funding there are um, agencies out there that help new immigrants settle in they help with settlement and employment opportunities you can also go out there and look for jobs so you can go on kijiji no, not kijiji <laughs> you can go on indeed you can go on glassdoor you can go on linkedin you can you know just get your foot out there um network get help the last but not the least is to have fun obviously um you come to canada upon arrival you don't want to try and put your mind up and then having to go from here to here just to try and figure out what to do or what you're not doing or stuff like that you know take a deep breath enjoy the weather if you have time go for a walk see your new environment enjoy canada call your parents 
call them video call them and be like i'm here in canada this is my first week this is how i feel so far um go out there there are beautiful lakes there are beautiful trails um you know to go explore take yourself out to go eat see canadians see um people get to know people if you're in school go to your school if you have family um visit friends um you know just enjoy explore canada is a beautiful place and i'm glad you're here now and um you do the things that you can do upon our arrival and i hope you enjoy canada i enjoy canada i think canada is an amazing place 